three major scientific discoveries that point to God's existence. Ooh, we're mixing science and God. Oh my goodness, it's impossible. All right, this is from uh, my man Stephen Meyer over at the Federal, well, not the Federal, he writes it in the Federalist, but through Discovery, the Discovery Institute out of Seattle. Uh, uh, Stephen Meyer is fantastic. Anyway, so let's read this. Uh, more uh, polls probing such young religiously unaffiliated agnostics and atheists have found that science, or at least the claims a putative spokesman for science, have played an outsized role in cementing dissatisfaction with a religious belief. In one poll, more than two-thirds of self-described atheists and a third of agnostics affirm the findings of science make the existence of God less probable. It's not how to see why. Since 2006, new atheist writers, Dawkins, uh, Sam Harris, Chris Hisson, Stephen Hawking, Bill Nye, Daniel Dennett, and Lawrence Cross, among others, I'm not familiar with Victor Stenger, have published a series of best-selling books arguing that science renders religious belief impossible. According to Dawkins and others, Darwinian evolution in particular establishes that the universe, the universe we observe has precisely the properties we should expect if there is, at bottom, no design, no purpose, nothing but blind, pitiless indifference. But does science actually support this strictly materialistic vision of reality? In fact, three major scientific discoveries during the last century contradict the expectations of scientific atheists. So that's first. First, cosmopolitans, cosmologists have discovered that the physical universe likely had a beginning, contrary to the expectations of scientific materialists who had long portrayed the material universe as eternal and self-existent, and therefore no need of an external creator. The first evidence of a cosmic beginning came in the 1920s, when astro astronomers discovered that light coming from distant galaxies was stretched out or redshifted as if the galaxy were moving away from us. Soon after, Belgian priest and physicist Georges Lamatre, I guess, and Caltech astronomer Edwin Hubble independently showed that galaxies farther away from Earth were receding faster than those close at hand. That suggests a spherical expansion of the universe and space like a balloon inflating from a singular explosive beginning from a Big Bang. Hmm. But Josh, you said the Big Bang is silly. The Big Bang in terms of the idea that all of the universe was in this tiny little, smaller than a pinprick. It just went kaboom. The Big Bang from God's creation is not, it would make sense to me. And as, I mean, we have a beginning essentially. So how did the beginning come other than a supernatural being? Well, you have to argue that. And the, the way they argue it, the new atheists, is that we had a big bang. Essentially, all there is nothing until something happened that made all the energy and the whole universe just explode into where we are today. I mean, it's just a silly enough concept. It's just, it's just it's silly to think that way. Now, you can. You can't prove it. I can't prove it. But the idea that science debunks the proof of God is just silly. It does no such thing. Uh, Lamatre also showed that Einstein's equations describing gravity most naturally implied a dynamic evolving universe. Despite Einstein's initial attempt to gerrymander his own equations to depict the universe as eternally existing and static, neither contracting nor expanding, in 1931 Einstein visited Hubble at the Mount Wilson Observatory, California, to view the redshift evidence for himself. He later announced that denying the evidence of a beginning was the greatest blunder of his scientific career. All right, so we'll keep reading here. Don't forget, Stephen Meyer, Darwin's Doubt, man. Great book. Um, I haven't read this one, The Return of the God Hypothesis. Interesting. He started a firestorm of media and scientific controversy when a biology journal at the Smithsonian Institute published his peer-reviewed scientific article, Advancing ID, Intelligent Design. Yeah, exactly. They don't want to hear anything that goes against their, quote, science. It's awesome. Evidence of a beginning of the entire universe, later reinforced by other developments in observational astronomy and theoretical physics, not only contradicted the expectations of scientific materialists, i.e., it's, it's almost like a self-perpetuating motion machine, it confirmed those of traditional theists. Uh, Arno Penzias, a physicist and Nobel laureate, the, laureate, the best data we have concerning a beginning are exactly what I would have predicted had nothing to go on but the first five books of Genesis. Yeah, exactly. Uh, five books of Moses, Genesis, being, being the first. 
Number two, physicists have discovered that we live in a kind of Goldilocks universe. Indeed, since the 1960s, physicists have determined that the fundamental physical laws and parameters of our universe have been finely tuned against all odds to make our universe capable of hosting life. Even slight alterations uh, in the values of many independent factors, such as the strength of gravitational and electromagnetic attraction, the masses of elementary particles, and initial arrangement of matter and energy in the universe would have rendered life impossible. Exactly. Basically, it's... For us to be here today, my friends, the amount of coincidences on top of coincidences on top of coincidences is, is simply, is, is truly impossible. That's impossible. Yeah, here we are. I mean, look, it's like, if you just look at it as a pure statistical possibility, there is no way we should be here. None whatsoever. And yet here we are. Kind of amazing, huh? All right, to avoid this, oh, I see. Not surprisingly, many physicists have concluded that the improbable fine tuning for life points to a cosmic fine tuner. Yeah. <laughs> As former Cam Cambridge astrophysicist Sir Fred Hoyle said, a common sense interpretation of the data suggests that super intellect has monkeyed with the physics to make life possible. And so now we're going to get the multiverse and things of that nature. It's oh man, what the physicists would call the gods of the gaps, which what Christians use too. We don't know so must be God. Physicists have to say the same thing, but they believe it's the science, the science of the gap. Now physicists have postulated a vast number of, oh, multiverse right here, a vast number of other universes. The multiverse idea portrays our universe as the outcome of a grand lottery in which some universe generating mechanism spits out billions and billions of universes so many that our universe with impro improbable combination of light conductive factors would eventually have to rise. <laughs> yes, advocates of the multiverse overlook an obvious problem. All such proposals postulate universe uh, generating mechanism. Uh, uh, let's see, postulate universe generating mechanism that themselves require prior unexplained fine tuning, thus taking us back to where we started in the need for an ultimate fine tuner. So again. If you're going to postulate that we have all these different universes just pumping out, pumping out, pumping out, just one happened to be us, uh, well, who started that? I mean, how did that begin? All had Big Bang theories and just one happened to have humans? I mean, that's, <laughs> we're right back to point one. Oh, boy. Finally, discoveries in molecular biology have revealed the presence of a digital code as a foundation of life, such as suggesting the worst work of a master programmer. After James Watson and Francis Crick elucidated the structure of DNA molecules, so let's not forget the lady, hang on a second, let's not forget uh, Rosalind Franklin, by the way. And by the way, Francis Crick, uh, not a, just a, not a good guy. All right. All right. So uh, let's see. Uh, in a, uh, let's see. Uh, after James Watson and Crick elucidated the structure of the DNA molecule in 1953, Crick developed his famed sequence hypothesis where he proposed that the chemical constituents in DNA function like letters in a written language of digital symbols symbols and a computer code. It's actually, this is interesting because uh, Francis Collins, he was a Christian, but he's a, I think he's a, he used to be or is the director of NIH or something like that, I can't remember, National Science Foundation. I think it's NIH, actually. Not one of those things. And, and people don't like him because he's a Christian. Uh, he 100% believes in the DNA code as in coming from uh, a, a first creator, God. The interesting thing is that he is a very uh, a big advocate of evolution as well. So it's interesting. So he believes that the God, because he said, you should watch him as his YouTube channel. I'm not sure. I haven't looked for a couple of years, but his, or on YouTube, you should watch him as speeches. It's, it's an amazing. I mean, there's like some amazing patterns that more than just fractal. It's just, it's nuts. It's amazing how the, uh, the sequencing language is just oh, so beautiful to behold. So a guy like Francis Collins, who's been running around with the heavy hitters in, in uh, Washington, D.C., and the scientists and stuff, he, he can't, even he can't, I don't know, maybe he has now, I don't think so, can't deny what is so obvious to be a grand creator. It's just interesting as can be. Now, he would not take kindly to uh, my per purview of the world, that's for sure, but uh, it's just interesting that all the scientists say that we've debunked God, and yet they haven't by a stretch of imagination. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, function computer code depends on a precise sequence of zeros and ones. Similarly, the DNA molecule's ability to direct the assembly of crucial protein molecules in cells depends on specific arrangements of chemical constituents called bases along the spine of the double helix structure. 
Thus, even Richard Dawkins has acknowledged the machine code of the genes is uncannily computer-like, or as Bill Gates explains, DNA is like a computer program, but far, far more advanced than any software we humans have ever created. But we know how it works. We, we can't create it, but we know how it's designed. It's kind of like the whole thing about uh, the watch. Richard Dawkins will try to say, we don't need to know the clock maker. Uh, we, uh, uh, the, who designed the clock? That kind of thing. It's kind of funny, man. No theory of undirected chemical evolution has explained the origin, origin of the information in DNA or RNA needed to build the first living cell from a simpler non-living chemicals. Instead, our uniform and repeated experience, the basis of all scientific reasoning, shows that systems possessing functional and digital information invariably arise from intelligent conscious causes. We know from experience that software comes from programmers. We know generally that information always arises from an intelligent source. So the discovery of information in every living cell provides strong grounds for inferring that intelligence played a role in life's origins. As Henry information theorist Henry Quassler says, information habitually arises from conscious activity. Science historian Frederick Burnham says the idea that God created the universe is more respectable hypothesis today than at any time in the last 100 years. In my book, The Return of the God Hypothesis, I concur and argue that recent scientific discoveries of a biological and cosmo cosmological or origins have decidedly theistic implications suggesting the popular science report of the death of God have been greatly exaggerated. Oh, good stuff. Um, Discovery Institute, if you're looking for a group to donate to, that's a perfect one right there. Love your comments. We'll see ya.